A rock curve shows how well your classification model or medical test performs. If the curve hacks the top left corner, your model is performing excellently. If it's near the diagonal, it's just guessing. Think of the area under the curve as your model's overall grade. The rule of thumb, the higher the AUC, the better the model. The AUC makes it super easy to compare different models or diagnostic tests. Interestingly, while the AUC describes the quality of a model in a single number, it is produced by two metrics, sensitivity and specificity, which are even more useful because we can optimize either of them or even both of them at the same time. Let me explain. When it comes to making decisions, whether it's medical tests like cancer screening or machine learning models sorting emails, the goal is simple get the most accurate results possible. But here's the trick part. Accurate can mean different things depending on the situation. Take cancer screening, for example. You want it to act like a super sensitive smoke detector. It might give a few false alarms, but that's okay because missing a real fire isn't an option. In this case, high sensitivity is key, even if it causes a few unnecessary worries. Now, think about email spam filters. You don't want it tagging your boss's urgent email as spam. That would be a disaster. You'd rather deal with a few spam emails than miss important messages. So here, you want high specificity. Finally, sometimes we need to balance both sides, catching the important stuff without getting overwhelmed by false alarms. That's where finding the right cut point comes in not too sensitive, not too specific, just right. Thus, expect to learn how to easily build rock curves with confidence intervals and multiple cut points all in one line of code, and how to maximize some parameters like accuracy or minimize others like misclassification rates. To build a rock curve and find the optimal cut point, you need two things. A binary response, this could be healthy or sick, alive or dead, or simply 0 or 1, and a numeric predictor. Now, this might be a blood parameter, like cortisol, where we want to find the optimal value to classify patients as sick or healthy, or the optimal dosage of a drug that balances healing effects without overdosing. The numeric predictor can also be a predicted probability from a machine learning model with multiple predictors. For example, let's use the Titanic survival dataset from car data package. We'll predict survival probabilities for passengers, add them to our dataset, and build a rock curve to find the optimal threshold. And the goal? Set a cutoff to classify passengers as either likely to survive or not likely to survive based on their predicted survival chance. Finding the optimal cutoff is like setting the perfect shower temperature. Too hot and you burn yourself? Too cold and you get that unexpected cold exposure you've been avoiding? To find our first optimal cut off, we'll use the cut pointer package and its cut pointer function. It only needs three simple arguments data, your dataset, numeric predictor, your predictions, and class, the binary response survived, yes or no. The result gives us several important metrics. Optimal cutoff. This is the threshold where sensitivity and specificity are balanced. And survival probability of 0.37, the model best separates survivors from not survivors. The sum of sensitivity and specificity, we maximize their combined value, making both metrics almost equal. Accuracy. This shows how well the model classifies cases. Since 50% is just random guessing, 78% is pretty solid for our small dataset. Area under the curve, or AUC, of 84%. An AUC above 80% means the model is good quality. Want to visualize it? Just use the plot row command to plot the row curve with the optimal cut off. Simple and intuitive. Now, while most people stop after finding the AUC and the optimal cutoff, we are just getting started. There is much more valuable information we can uncover.
For example, the plot metric function shows the sum of sensitivity and specificity, which we have maximized by default, for every possible cut point. Why is this important? Well, by balancing the true positive rate, correctly identified survivors, and the true negative rate, correctly identifying non-survivors, this sum helps select the cutoff that maximizes overall classification accuracy. Remember when we talk about catching the good stuff while avoiding the bad? That's exactly what we've done, thanks to the default settings of cut pointer function. Besides sum of sensitivity and specificity, there are other useful metrics to find the best cutoff, depending on your needs. Metrics like the Yodan index, F1 score, or misclassification rate can be more effective in different situations. To switch to one of these, just add two arguments, method and metric. Why these two? Metric measures how well your model separates classes, and method selects the cut point based on that metric. Together, they determine the optimal cut point. When catching every positive case is critical, like cancer diagnosis, you can set the cost of false negative to be 10 times higher than false positives. What happens if we do that? Well, sensitivity jumps to 99%, meaning 99% of cancer cases are caught early, allowing immediate treatment. The optimal cutoff drops, ensuring we flag any suspicious case, even if it means more false positives. Accuracy drops to 48%, but that's fine. Why? We'll only miss 5 cancer cases, but might scare over 500 people with false alarms. A small price to pay when lives are at stake, if you ask me. Now let's flip it. Say you want to stop spam from flagging important emails. Here, set the cost of false positive to be 5 times higher than false negatives. Results? Specificity hits 99%, the optimal cutoff increases to 0.8, accuracy is 74%, and only 7 important emails mistakenly land in spam. However, we'll have to deal with 260 spam emails in the inbox. If you are curious about how a specific metric is calculated, just type its name in RStudio and hit Enter. I'll cover these metrics in more details in another video. For now, let me show you something even cooler. If you don't set costs for false positives and false negatives, they are treated equally, one-to-one, -one, by default. When this happens, you might see a peculiar warning. Multiple optimal cut points found. At first, it may seem like a problem, since we are aiming for one optimal cut point. But like many challenges, it's actually a great opportunity. Namely, if we plot the misclassification cost for all cut points and draw a horizontal red line at 213, the minimized misclassification cost value, we'll notice something interesting. There are at least four cutoffs close to the optimal cut point of 0.59. Zoom in and it becomes clearer. Now, when we plot the sum of sensitivity and specificity, the curve flattens even more, revealing an even wider range of cutoffs with similar performance. This is called the floating cut point phenomenon. Think of it like finding a lost sock. You grab one only to realize there are five more just like it under the bed. The downside? There isn't always only one perfect cutoff. The upside? The cut pointer function solved this by allowing us to find a range of cut points with similar performance. Here's how it works. To get a range of viable cut offs, you just need to add two more arguments to the cut pointer function. The first one is the tolerance for our metric. This sets how much flexibility you allow for your metric. For example, if we add 005 to a sum of sensitivity and specificity, of 1.56, we'll get all cat offs that fall within this specified range of 1.51 to 1.61. The second argument, break ties, may seem minor, but it's a game changer. It summarizes multiple cat offs with similar performance into a single, more reliable value, like the mean or median. For instance, instead of relying on a floating cat off of 0.37, you can use a more stable median cutoff, like 0.46,
reducing the risk of floating cut points issues. When we take it a step further by using C with break ties, it returns all cat points. This can be displayed on the rock curve plot or extracted from the summary. But are multiple cut points useful? Well, having a range of cut offs allows us not only to produce a more robust median or average cut off, but also lets us add a measure of uncertainty, like standard deviation or interquartile range, to our cat point or any other metric such as accuracy. This makes the results more statistically reliable. Think about it, a single cutoff is hard to trust because of the floating cut point issue. But a cutoff with confidence intervals shows how certain we are about its accuracy. So how do we measure this uncertainty? It's simple. Just select the metric you want to calculate uncertainty for, like optimal cut point, sum of specificity and sensitivity, or accuracy, and summarize them using basic dplyr syntax. Since horizontal uncertainty along the rock curve is useful, we can make our analysis even stronger by calculating uncertainty perpendicular to the curve. And this is where bootstrapping comes in. All you need is one new argument, boot runs, with a number of bootstrap samples. For simplicity, I've removed the horizontal uncertainty to avoid confusion, but I'll show you later how both uncertainties work together. And the familiar plot metric function now shows 95% confidence intervals across the entire row curve. And the summary function also gives a detailed bootstrap summary with both parametric uncertainty with mean and 95% confidence intervals and non-parametric uncertainty with median and interquartile range. Cool, right? But the plot cut boot function is even cooler because it goes one step further by visualizing the distribution of cut points found via bootstrapping. Here's what's fascinating. Instead of finding a single optimal cut off or even a central range of viable cut offs, bootstrapping reveals two peaks or two potential central cut points. What does this mean? It could indicate two distinct groups in our dataset. So how do we know if different groups have different cutoffs? I'm glad you asked. It couldn't be easier. Just add one more intuitive argument, subgroup. Tell cut pointer which variable contains your subgroups. In our case, it's sex. And just for fun, let's include both horizontal and perpendicular uncertainties. After running plot rock, you'll see separate cutoffs for males and females, allowing you to compare their rock curves. In our example, the AUC for females is 82%, compared to 65% for males. This means our model predicts female survival much more accurately. The optimal cutoffs differ significantly between genders, which becomes clear when we use plot metric function. Males approximately 0.3, females approximately 0.75. This is crucial because it shows that medication dosage might need to be adjusted by gender for the best effect. For example, women may need lower doses of hair loss treatment, a bold statement I know, but they might also need higher doses of painkillers compared to men probably because men are pain in the ass, as one of my ex-girlfriends kindly informed me. By the way, if you like this video so far, smash that like button or join the channel. It really helps. If you think the cut pointer function is amazing, calling it that would be an understatement. And here is why. With the OptCut object, designed to maximize only sum of sensitivity and specificity, you can actually display any metric you want using the even more powerful plot cut pointer function. You can plot familiar metrics like Jordan's index and accuracy, or new ones we haven't touched yet, such as true positives and false negatives, false discovery rate or positive predictive value, to name a few. By the way, if bootstrapping was used, like in our last example, bootstrapped confidence intervals will be automatically used and included in the plot. Want confidence intervals for all these metrics along the rock curve? No problem. Just add any metric to your OptCAD object and you'll get the median and median absolute deviation or mean plus standard deviation for every metric in every subgroup. How cool is that? 
my brain is about to explode. Plus, cut pointer returns a data frame that includes the original data, bootstrap results, and all metrics in nested data frames. You can easily extract and plot this data manually when needed. And if you are still here watching and learning, first of all, you are amazing. And secondly, you are on your way to the top 1% of data scientists because you'll outshine the rest by delivering deeper insights. That's why I'll give you even more useful functions. With just a simple plot command, you can display multiple results in a single plot. If you are an epidemiologist, you love this sensitivity versus specificity plot. And if you are a machine learning expert, you can easily generate a precision recall plot with just one command. Just when you thought we were done, here is the next level stuff. Let's say you are testing a new drug and have multiple predictors driving your cut point, things like age or DSI from the suicide package. A multivariable model would combine all predictors into a single prediction column, but wouldn't tell you which predictor is the most important. Sure, you could test each predictor separately and compare their area under the curves to find the best one. But if you've got 100 predictors or more, that's way too much work. Who has time for that? Luckily, there is a shortcut. The multi-cut pointer function automatically checks all numeric columns in your dataset at once. The result? Just like running each predictor separately. Namely, you'll see that D is I has a much higher area under the curve than H, so it makes sense to try D is I for the cut point. Therefore, use multi-cut pointer to save tons of time. One last problem, small sample sizes. With small samples, the rock curve can develop too many corners, making it hard to pinpoint the best cut point. To fix this, you can apply a smoothing technique. One simple option is using maximize spline metric as the method and adjusting the spare argument, smoothing parameter, between 0 and 1. This selects the optimal cut point based on the smooth metric values. However, there is no perfect smoothing level. You'll need to experiment a bit to find what works best. But once applied, smoothing can dramatically change results. For example, after smoothing, the cut point for females shifts from 2 to 3. A big difference. Finally, cut pointer isn't the only package that can create raw curves and find optimal cut points. Here's a quick look at two great alternatives, AP and Rocket. I won't dive into them now, since this video is already running long, but they're worth checking out. I hope you can see that we didn't just fight one cut off, we discovered multiple cutoffs with two ways to measure uncertainty. First, tolerance while maximizing our chosen metric, and secondly, bootstrapping to build strong confidence intervals. And speaking of bootstrapping, if you want to take your data science game to the next level, you absolutely need to know the four reasons why not parametric bootstrap regression with tidy models is better than normal ordinary regression. To learn that, just check out this video next.